Hello, good people. Welcome to Africa Talks Tech with Sam and I. Our guest today on the show is the founder of Digital Age Conversation, uh, Edith Utete. Sam, what are we going to be discussing with Edith today? Well, um, we're building on her organization, which is Digital Age Conversation. So it's simply going to be having a great chat with Edith. Um, she's got some great insights, especially around parenting, um, cyber guidance, and an all round fun person. So stay connected, tune in, tune up for some great nuggets all the way from Zimbabwe. So thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. All right, welcome everybody to Africa Talks Tech. Uh, in the next half an hour or so, we're going to be spending time with Edith Utete. But just before we kick off the show proper now, uh, let's start with our introductions first. And my name is Kazim Adeguega. So I'm currently based in Nigeria. I work for Icon Systems Limited. And I do this with my very good African brother and my good friend, Sam. Hi, my name is Sam Erskine. Thanks for the intro, Kazim. I'm based down in the UK. I work for a large organization and I drive our digital experience. Um, but for this show, I'm just um, catching up with my brother on the other side of the pond. And we're looking forward to speaking to Edith. So I guess, Kazim, it's over to you. And let's see what we can learn from Edith. All right, uh, Sam. So let's just get rolling then. So, so I'm sure people will want to learn a little bit more about you, Edith. So please tell our audience a little bit more about yourself now. Thank you. Thank you both for having me. Uh, as you said, my name is Edith Utete, and I am based in Zimbabwe. I grew up in Zimbabwe, got married here, <laughs> had children in Zimbabwe. But uh, I love traveling. And one of the things I wanted to become growing up was either a, an air hostess or an, an astronaut. <laughs> So none of those two things happened, but I'm glad that now I've gotten an opportunity to, to be a cyber note instead of an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in a small town called Chinoy, which was a little bit more on the backward side in, in, in our community because that was the farming community and simple life and all that so yeah I, I came to the city for university and discovered a lot of things as i was growing i was learning and and growing at the same time i, I had to grow fast grow up fast um learn the ropes in a lot of the things that i now dabble in and i'll be telling you a little more about what i do in terms of my work but um, on the outside work, I'm also a Toastmaster. Uh, I actually serve as secretary for my club involving ladies. I also write books, uh, all sorts of things, faith-based, um, inspirational, motivational. I write um, poetry. And then, of course, I write around the areas of my interest in terms of work as well. So if I'm not reading, I am writing and uh, I love to travel, like I said, and I'm such a foodie. That's a wow. little bit about me. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. And it's a great introduction. I mean, we, we could go, dive into so many topics, but we did a little bit of research. And though you say you're a cybernaut, um, you didn't touch on the fact that your background was in law and broadcasting. So how do you go from law and broadcasting into, you know, the digital space now? And, you know, how did that happen? Tell us a little bit more. It was partly coincidence, partly by design, actually. Um, when I started my career, I actually wanted to pursue human rights law but the opportunity to, to go for my master's in human rights they didn't work out. So I worked in the civil service as a labor, labor lawyer. 
and uh, and I was not happy. I just did not enjoy labor law. For me, it was too slow. It wasn't dynamic enough. I, I, I just wasn't enjoying it. So what I did was um, look around for something else and an opportunity came up with the broadcasting regulator. They wanted a legal and corporate affairs director. I also, I went in there uh, as a corporate secretary as well as a legal advisor, but I just felt so drawn to the technical side of things. And even as I was being asked to draft the regulations around broadcasting, I was, I wanted to know more, like how do, how do these things actually work technically? Um, I was lucky to have colleagues who were patient enough to, to teach me the ropes. And as I was looking also at some of my roles, one of which was um, consumer protection in the broadcasting sector, I realized that the technical aspects were not really uh, converging well with the social aspects. I, what I mean by that is you've got your, say your satellite broadcasting, your satellite TV channels, right? And the good part with satellite, those they've got prime time and then the kiddies ones and whatnot. But you'd find that sometimes the content would not be appropriate, even though there's a, an age restriction of say 13 years or 18 years, uh, or there's, it's, it's open to all, there, it wasn't always gelling the way it should. So my interest was mostly for the consumer, for the, especially the young people, to make sure they were getting the right content and, um, and, and that broadcasters were held accountable However, during that phase, this is where telecoms and broadcasting and, and, into, and everything just converged uh, on, on our smartphones. So now I, I went to, to the radio, um, radio communications uh, conference. And for the first time, I see the smartphone and I'm seeing what it's capable of doing. I was blown away. But I, I, when I went back home, I was also worried that, okay, so now we can share pictures, videos, audio on our phone. What does that mean now for the consumer? How are we going to regulate this thing, this new device? So it was a convergence of my legal expertise um, and then my, my, my but my maternal instinct, worrying about children and what all this would mean. Later on, my own children started also telling me about their experiences using uh, computers and accessing the internet. And this is where the passion exploded because now my children were involved and it was like, I have to do something, it is not work anymore. It is now involving my flesh and blood and my children don't live in a vacuum. They're going to interact with other children. Um, this is something I have to pursue. So this is how the journey started for me. Thank you very much. Uh, so, so let's talk digital age conversations now. You know, you, you are the founder, right, of digital age conversation. So, so please, can you tell us indeed, what is digital age conversation all about? What problem are you looking to solve with this initiative? And uh, what, what prompted you to, to start the Digital Age Conversation? Digital Age Conversations started off as, like I told you, my children were now accessing the internet at school. Um, and I approached the school to find out what safeguards they had, what uh, education they, they were giving the children around internet safety around uh, intellectual property, respect of intellectual property, as well as protection of their own intellectual property. And at that time, the school had no strategy because they actually had not foreseen those things as being issues. So I took it upon myself to then go to that school where my children went to, to train, firstly, the, the educators. First of all, okay, I first had a conversation with the children. That's how the digital age conversations 
the names came from. So we would sit around and talk about their experiences online, um, the good aspects as well as the, the bad aspects, the things that they didn't like about the internet. And I just uh, took note of everything that we discussed. We did that for like two years, just going in and out and talking to the children. And also obviously just raising their awareness to how they can protect themselves, how they should conduct themselves as digital citizens. Um, realizing that as long as the educators were not on board, it was going to be an issue. That's when we started also training the educators and eventually the parents around those issues of digital safety and digital citizenship. Building on what you've shared, right, as a parent, um, that you've got to find that balance between um, innovation for the children and safety as well. So um, I'm a digital immigrant, um, which means that I've lived across multiple generations of this digital evolution but children are digital natives right so it's natural to them so as a parent that uh, perhaps are not in sync fully with all generations and this evolution what's your guidance for other parents on how they find the balance between making sure that children are keeping up with innovation while simultaneously mm -hmm. making sure that they're protected as they explore this vast digital network well you know, I, I'm, I'm in this thing as well with, with other parents. So I will share my experiences and things that have worked for me, which I also have shared uh, in my circles with the parents that I work with. And they've also found it very useful. One thing that is important before we even go onto the smartphone, onto the computer, onto the laptop, the iPad, you have to have a relationship with your child. You really have to have the kind of relationship where communication is always freely flowing. It doesn't matter what kind of safeguards you can put, what parental controls you can have. If there is no communication with you and your child, the, it's highly unlikely that um, the, the benefits may not be fully uh, felt and also your child may not be able to be resilient you know there are lots of things that happen online so for for that balance to be there it, there has to be the offline aspect of support as well as the online aspect so offline we've got the communication the trust the ability for for your child to um have access to you undivided attention from you. The problem is most times the children want guidance, they want um, attention. The parent is on their own device. So what happens then is that the child then turns to a device also for comfort and gets lost along the way. So offline you've got your values, you've given them the, the that safe space to talk to you whenever they, they want to talk to you. And also be open-minded because opportunities are now different from how it was for us when we we're growing up um, if your child comes and says i want to be a gamer i want to be a youtuber i want to be insta famous don't be dismissive I, pay attention and listen let them express themselves and and allow them to tell you more to inform you about what it means what why do they want to be a content creator? Why do they want to dabble in, in building in video games? What is it um, that intrigues them? What is it, what is the benefit that they're going to get? And explore with them. Now, now we're going on to the online side of it. Now that your child has come and they've said, mom I, or dad, I want to explore Instagram or Snapchat, go to that platform with them no matter how daunting it is for you. If it's something that you feel uncomfortable with doing with your child, do it on your own. Find out more about um, the safety features, the things that are positive about it, the benefits that your child can get from that platform and so on. And then 
ask your child questions. I think the problem with um, the generation of parents, me included, and my parents as well, <laughs> was that we have this thing where children are not to be consulted on anything, their opinions don't matter, but this is the time when we need to shift our parenting style a little bit. Now you're dealing with a different kind of child, a different kind of student if it's in the classroom. If it's in the workplace, we even have different generation of workforce because they, like you said, they're digital natives. And for them, exploring cyberspace comes easy. Taking a gadget and finding whatever they want to find and doing whatever they want to do is so much easier for them is they're very comfortable, they're tech savvy, but they're not always digitally literate. So your experiences now as a parent will matter as you guide them to say, you know what, I actually don't understand much about this platform, but why don't we explore it together? Teach me, what does it, how, how are you benefiting? How are you uh, finding it useful? And then if you pick up something of concern, then it's easier for you to say, okay, I hear the benefits, but have you considered these uh, risks that you're potentially going to be involved in? And you'll find a lot of the time when you've got that non-judgmental approach to things, it's easier for them to come to you. I've got a 16 year old and an 18 year old. Those are the most difficult ages. <laughs> they can be sneaky, they can be deceptive, they can do all sorts yeah. on social media. But I'm really grateful because from the time they were little up to now, um, they still come to me and they will even tell me, oh, do you know there's this new feature, um, this, this uh, new challenge, like, you know, TikTok always has these new challenges and we discuss about the pros and the cons of the challenge. And sometimes we even get into those uh, dance challenges together. So they're seeing that, but they've asked me to stay off TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, um, they, they, they get that I, I'm actually not like them, but I want to be there for them in their digital experiences. So sometimes they'll even say to me, I have deleted my account or I am going offline and I'll ask why. And they, they'll say, you know, it's too much for me. I feel overwhelmed. I'm, my mental health is suffering. And I'll be like, oh, wow, that's impressive. Let's talk about that. And then we talk about it and I, I get to give them my, my views and support and just affirm them because they, they're always needing that affirmation and that validation. Once they don't get it from you, there's always the online world waiting, waiting with its wide, arms wide open just for your child. So always be the first person that your child feels they can talk to about their experiences, um, negative and positive. Don't be judgmental. Yeah, sometimes they'll tell you shocking things, but uh, take, <laughs> take it easy and just give them that opportunity to, to be open with you and to freely share with you even the things that are a little bizarre to you like why would you want to be on youtube all the time why do you want people to know all about your life whatever it is but talk to them about your concerns and it has to come from that safe space that you've built, built on offline sorry i could go all day talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much for that. Uh, and by the way, Sam, it would be nice to, to see you do like a dance challenge on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well, my moves, my moves, I don't know if they're still up to date, you know, they, they keep on changing. When I was growing up, every song had a dance move. Um, yeah. But now, um, maybe Kazim, we we can do a show <laughs> where we do a dance challenge, right, for TikTok. But I'm not sure how safe that is. We'll have to consult with Edith to make sure that we are in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, right? We we have to set an example. I'll get you a dance instructor. 
<laughs> no problem. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much. So, so I'm sure parents listening to us right now would want to learn from your experience, Edith, you know, on how they can best safeguard uh, their kids uh, on the internet, especially today, you know, in today's digital age. So I know you've mentioned a few of these tips already, but, but if you were to just recap them uh, briefly, just briefly now, what would you say would be your top three tips for parents watching this right now? Okay, first one, be your child's safe space. The person that they can talk to openly about any experience that they're having online. Secondly, <sighs> teach yourself, get yourself educated, know what's going on in your child's life. Um, don't be that parent who has no idea which game their child is playing, which social media platform they are on. You have to know what it is and at least understand what the, the platform is about and how your child can be at risk and how they can also benefit. And um, thirdly, be open to new things. There's so many wonderful things that are happening thanks to the technology that we now have. So be open to learning new experiences, exploring the different features and the different platforms. You will be surprised at how much you yourself can also benefit just from working the journey with your child. Above all of it, be very intentional about giving your children the attention that they need. They need validation. They still need you to parent them, even though there's a new way of parenting. The, there's some old ways that still are very fundamental and they still required, have boundaries, have rules, stick to the boundaries, stick to the rules. Also, if you feel it's okay, you can also have rewards for them so that um, it's not always a, a negative thing. That's how you can find your balance as a digital parent. Fabulous. Um, we, we could talk to you all day. Um, however, because this show is quite concise and we want to come back and learn more um, from you, wanted to um, just close out with a, a question around um, entrepreneurship because um, you've talked very articulately about the journey but we know that with all journeys and with everything else that you've shared there are always challenges right so for those that are looking to um, follow in your footsteps or create your own footpaths what are some of the challenges that you've experienced that you can share and perhaps you know some mitigation around there um, or tips um, you know more in TikTok style I guess you know something mm -hmm for them even using things like TikTok, right you do a show you name something and it goes away so let's keep it digital so around digital conversations what are some of those challenges that others that are trying to do the same thing that you've done or something similar should be aware of well one challenge that i first had was that people did not really understand um, the value of having an online presence and also they just assumed that when children are on their phones, it's all child play. So there was a lot of resistance from the people that I wanted to help, the people that I wanted to provide the solution to. Uh, they, they actually felt like I was also being intrusive because now you're talking to people about their parenting of their children. And where you've got a child who comes to you and says, I've experienced cyberbullying, I've experienced um, cyber stalking, I've experienced sexting and sexual uh, violations, all sorts of things. And then you go to the parent and you say, um, this is the situation and I would like to help you and your child. I expected people would be like, oh, thank you. We're happy you're here. But I, that's when I realized <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the African side of things as well, where, you know, we, we want to keep our private family issues private. People were not receptive of anything that I had to say or to offer. So I found that a bit um, troubling and discouraging, but what I 
would do every time I'd say to myself, you know what, I've got a law degree, I'm going to go back into practice, I'm just going to leave this. <laughs> every time I, would say, I would think that, and then I would go onto my phone, maybe into my emails, and someone is sharing something, because there would always be that one person saying, please help me, please help my child, please help our school, please come to our church and help us, please come into our company and help talk to the, our workers. It would happen each time that I'd said I'm giving up. And and then I'd just knowing that there is always that one person who needs what I have to offer, I would keep pushing. Um, I also felt uh, resistance when I tried to partner with uh, other organizations. I felt that this was something that I couldn't carry on my own. It's needed the whole community, all uh, stakeholders in the community to be part of it from government to legislators to the police uh, to the education system to everybody basically to corporate and I would approach different people again thinking oh this is such a noble cause people are going to buy in I, unfortunately it was not a priority it was not something of concern to them. So again, the discouragement would often come. Uh, another thing was people didn't want to pay me for my services because they'll say, ah, we can just Google this and get the information from YouTube. We can get it from, from Dr. Google. Who are you little Zimbabwean girl wanting to tell us about these things? Um, but uh, uh, the conviction and the passion and knowing that a lot of the things um, that are out there are not always uh, contextualized to the particular circumstances at hand, uh, I kept pushing and also just uh, with those people who wanted to work with me, we amplified the work and the impact. And eventually other people came on board. And I must say, I am so grateful for COVID-19 because that woke people up. <laughs> because now they really realized um, that online uh, is it, the way to go. Firstly, everybody's going digital and should have done it sooner. <laughs> For schools, uh, the digital skills that we try to, to teach the teachers, they had to do in a hurry now. And this is something that we talked about from 2014 to say, this is the future, let's start um, teaching, upskilling our, our teaching staff so that they're in sync with the 21st century student who is already way up, you know, ahead of them. Uh, so I got a lot of work thanks to COVID-19 and, yeah, and the lockdowns and the e-learning and the working from home. So there's also the new aspect of our organization, which is now a focus on digital wellness where we are now talking about the overwhelm of being connected, which I hope you'll invite me again to talk about soon. <laughs> <laughs> but in a nutshell, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Definitely. And um, it's, it's great that you mentioned about that um, well-being, right? So we'll definitely reconnect and talk around that because it, you know, it's a topic that I'm passionate about, even though I've got my controls. I know that... Um, there are a lot of people that are thinking about automating the digital detox, right? To make sure that um, you don't get overwhelmed as you shared. But I'm going to hand over to Kazim and say, you know, thank you so much for um, joining us for this part one of our chat. But Kazim, um, any parting words um, before we let Edith go? Uh, okay, um, so I, I think I'm going to leave it to our guest uh, to try to uh, leave us with a parting word before we close out. Any last words from you, Edith? Thank you. I'm just going to um, talk to the digital parents here to say, you know what, it, it can be quite overwhelming when you consider everything around your child's digital habits. Um, but take it a step at a time, give yourself grace, allow yourself to, to learn from the mistakes that you've made and know that it is never too late to start the digital age conversations with your child 
and also know that children crave for this. The children that I've um, communicated with from across the world, from across the different ages, have one thing that they want from parents. They just want to be loved and to be parented, even if it means being punished and being given restrictions. They actually feel like that's a sign that you care, that you are um, you're aware of what is happening in their world. So the way we've always parented, that is so, so important. What we just now need to add on is the digital awareness and to walk that journey with our child. But give yourself grace and do not give in to the overwhelm. You can do it. Thank you very much, Edith. So it's good to meet you, Edith, and uh, to have you share your thoughts and challenges on today's topic with us on Africa Talks Tech. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching this. And remember to subscribe to uh, our channel uh, on YouTube. Again, it's Africa Talks Tech, if you haven't done so already. So from our guest now, Edith Utete, from Sam and myself, it's a bye-bye, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.